So in the broadest sense, I think everyone in the sector needs to know that digital isn't a scary word, that digital technologies are not anything to be afraid of, um, that they're just a different set of tools to enable people to carry out their jobs. In terms of slightly more tangible skills around digital technologies, I think it's really important that everyone knows how to write for the web and really important that everyone has a broad understanding of digital accessibility principles. For example, how to write alt text for an image. In terms of resources, I would say that Arts Council England and the Museums Association and the Collections Trust are really good first ports of call for support. Also, peer networks are really invaluable. I particularly find the Museums Computer Group really helpful. It's a network of individuals who work across the sector in digital and tech roles, doing a variety of different jobs. And they're invariably really generous with their time and knowledge. And it's just a peer-to-peer -peer network of answering questions and sharing experiences. Culture24 are another organisation who provides great resources. What I found particularly helpful as we start to move out of the pandemic is they've hosted a series of webinars where colleagues from across the sector have got together to discuss how we face challenges such as delivering hybrid working. This has been really helpful as we're all facing these challenges at the same time and there's no set right or wrong answer on how to solve them. So having a space where we can come together and share our successes and failures has been invaluable. I think one of the things that we've really benefited from is having um, the sector support. So uh, the Arts Council and other organisations, there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of training, online training, uh, materials, uh, there's studies on or digital audiences. Um, so there's a lot of uh, material out there that people can access. And what we've also benefited from is from the informal networks of, of other organisations who we can learn from. People are incredibly generous with their time and we, we've um, really benefited from uh, the other theatres and museums and um, other cultural organisations who've perhaps been through a project like ours before and we can talk to them and they've uh, helped us. In terms of my own career, I have come through um, when there was a lot of evolution happening within digital marketing and social media. So I've kind of done a lot of learning on the job and there's been quite a lot of trial and error. Um, I think uh, nowadays you can very easily access lots and lots of free information. Um, on YouTube, you'll find lots of videos um, with people giving their own expertise and it's all free. Um, you can also use the tools that are provided by the um, platform providers. So for example, Meta have a huge database, help database that will um, show you how to do everything from tracking people through Google Analytics to simply pulling off your numbers for the month. Um, similarly, Twitter. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a case of going out there and, and doing a Google search basically and seeing what comes up. Uh, there are also um, resources provided by people, I'm going to name check the Arts Marketing Association because they've been incredibly, incredibly helpful um, in terms of upskilling members of the team um, to use digital marketing platforms. And I would say that they, I mean, there is a small cost attached with the membership to the AMA, but actually I think what you get out of it is, is really, really useful. Um, there's Museum Next. They um, put on quite a lot of uh, very obviously museum focused conferences and they're all digital so you can access them from the comfort of your own home or home office. Uh, and again, just giving people the skills they need to bring museums and heritage online. So there's the kind of the the practical skills, you need to be able to create something engaging and whether that's a static post, you've taken a lovely photograph, whether it's video and you've edited it really well, whether it's luck and you were in the right place at the right time and you caught something brilliant happening or whether it's something that you've been planning for ages. Uh, there, are, there are skills like um, being able to do a small amount of design work. You don't have to be a graphic designer by any stretch of the imagination, but just being able to create something that people want to look at 
that communicates well, being able to write because actually captions are really important in social media. Um, and uh, there's been quite a lot of research done into it. And even if you write, you know, really long 200 word caption, people will read it if, you know, if you've caught their attention. So being able to write is actually really important. Um, but also being able to keep things fairly concise when you're trying to get information across, like come to our event, <laughs> it will cost this much. And uh, I think those skills are, uh, you know, can't be um, forgotten about, but there's also the the planning, the, the strategy, and you, it's, you might be able to jump in without much thought and create a really lovely social media post that, you know, maybe even goes viral, but long-term creating a campaign that's going to, consistently engage people it is really important to have sat down created a schedule you know when you're posting you know when your audience is online so doing the research actually is is it's not the you know the sexy part of social media but it, it that's what will get your message consistently out there to people and they'll see, keep seeing you and there's be, there'll be that drip feed of oh yeah that place looks interesting oh yeah i've heard about them a few times maybe i'll go um, so I think that's that's just as important as your sort of creative skills.